they are waddly cutesy mini gummy bears. They can die and come back to life. Even survive the vacuum of space. Tardigrades. The real-life Jesus with extra cuteness. You probably have heard of tardigrades. But have you ever seen them with your own eyes? Let me help you with a few tips and tricks to find them. Tardigrades have a cute nickname, giving us a subtle hint where to look for them. The Moss Piglet. Cute, right? And now we know where we can find them. Please be reminded that you need a microscope to see them properly. Just about any microscope will do, even simple or cheap ones. So, with this out of the way, let's get into it. The basic method by itself is extremely simple. Find some moss, gently harvest it, put it in a container with a wide opening and moist it with rainwater. Wait for an hour or so and squeeze out the soaked up water. Collect it in the container and let the particles settle to the ground. Finally, use a pipette to transfer some of the sedimented particle layer to a microscope slide or petri dish. And then, if you're lucky, you might very well find some tardies. But to this method, there is a little bit more. Let's get into detail. The type of moss and the location the moss is growing in is an essential factor for finding tardigrades. Mosses with loose structure, not able to retain water very well, contain few or no tardigrades at all. The highest numbers of tardigrades are to be found in thick and dense mosses that act like a sponge. This moss here, for example, looks beautiful, but doesn't contain any tardigrades at all. Depending on the growing location of the moss, the number and species of tardigrades found will vary greatly. Ideally, moss should be sampled from a place that is not too shaded and not too sunny either. The best places to find them are the fringes of forests, partially shaded valleys or roofs. In case you're looking for armored tardigrades though, like Echiniscus shown here, you should sample moss from roofs or rocks exposed to as much direct sunlight as possible. Next, let me show you some tools we might need for sampling. Let me introduce you to the equipment we need. One plastic bag, one plastic bottle, and last but not least, an average shopping bag made from cotton or something like this. The plastic bag is intended for slightly moist moss, while the cotton bag is intended for dry moss. And last but not least, the plastic bottle. This is intended for very moist moss. You just take a patch of moss and you squeeze it out. And you collect all the squeezed out juices in this bottle. The tardigrades, if there are any, will be contained in the liquids. The white neck of the bottle will help us to squeeze out the soaking wet moss. The harvested liquid will be transported in the bottle. At home, it will also be transferred with a pipette to a slide or petri dish for microscopic observation. It's time to play good moss, bad moss. Good moss. Good moss. Bad moss. Good moss. Bad moss. Bad moss. Bad moss. Good moss. Bad moss. Oh yeah, something very important. After you sampled some moss, please don't forget to bring it back after you finished sampling. So after you squeeze the tardigrades out from the sampled moss, bring it back to the place where you found it and put it back. This will regrow in no time. In case the sampled moss is nicely moist, just squeeze the water contained in a bottle with a wide opening. The tardigrades will be contained in the collected liquid. But in case the sampled moss is slightly moist or even bone dry, use the following method. Put the moss in a wide open container. Gently sprinkle the moss with rainwater and wait for about an hour. The water 
will cause the tardigrades to come back to life. Using tap water is not recommended because it may have a different pH and contain disinfectants, etc. Then, squeeze the soaking wet moss with your hands and collect the water in the vessel. Leave the moss juice rest for a while until all the microscopic particles settle to the ground. Then use a pipette to siphon off a tiny amount from the bottom of the vessel and transfer the liquid into a small petri dish or so. The only thing we are interested in when looking for moss tardigrades is not the moss, it is the mechanically extracted water from the patches of moss. After squeezing out the water from the patches of moss, make sure to wash your hands and to avoid touching your eyes. The liquid covering your hands is full of nematodes, which may pose a threat. When looking for tardigrades under the microscope, use a low magnification objective, like for example four or five times. You will see many different creatures wiggling about, which might be quite overwhelming at first. The stringy creatures are nematodes, small worms. They cannot be confused with tardigrades, while rotifers definitely can sometimes be mistaken. You should be on the lookout for creatures like this. They can be waddling over the surface or be attached to small pieces of debris. They look a bit like a tiny caterpillar and have a peculiar way of movement. After you spot a tardigrade, use a small pipette to transfer it to a clean slide for a more detailed observation. Et voila! You have made it! Now you're a proud owner of a tardigrade. Congratulations! Thank you so much for watching. Let's dig up some more dirt and let's stay curious.